What's up my disciples, Coding Jesus here. And in today's video, I will be sharing with you guys a video segment of a one-on-one -on -one private consulting session that I had with one of my consulting clients. Now, if you wanna break into quantitative research, quantitative trading, or quantitative development, this video will be extremely important for you to watch. In this video segment, what I do is I act as the interviewer. It's called a mock behavioral interview. I act as the interviewer and I ask my consulting client a lot of questions that I know, not I think, I know the interviewer is going to ask him as an interviewee. At the end of this consulting session, which usually lasts an hour, but this segment is only gonna be 10 to 15 minutes, I will be sharing my feedback as to how this person answered these questions, what they did well, and what they can improve on. And that's gonna be this actual video segment that I will be sharing with you guys. It'll be the feedback component. Now to provide you with some context, as a result of this person's own individual hard work and going through my resume review service, he's been able to land interviews at large names like Optiver, Acuna Capital, IMC, and Citadel. And he's currently in the intermediate stages in the interview process with all these firms, meaning he's at the behavioral interview with HR or he's at the technical pair programming interview with an actual quantitative developer. Before I go into this actual video segment, guys, I want to share with you one framework that I like to address or I like to confront all behavioral questions with, and that is the STAR framework. Situation, task, action, result. That's how you want to answer most behavioral questions. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm the interviewer and I ask, give me a time or tell me about a time where you worked with a team. Some people just ramble and blah and say whatever and maybe say like two, three lines and they don't apply this framework and that's why they fail these really to pass interview, uh, behavioral interviews. The STAR framework looks like this. Tell me about the situation, the S, then the task you performed, the actions required to perform them, and the result. A lot of people miss the result. The situation, what was involved? Was this a school project? Was it given to you by your current employer? What's the task? Well, did you have to build an application? Did you have to enter data into some Excel spreadsheet? What was the action? How'd you go about doing this? Did you manually enter data into the Excel spreadsheet or did you write some Python bot to do it for you? And what was the result? Maybe the result was you learned a lot more about pandas in Python or matplotlib, or maybe the result was you were able to just learn how to sit down and, and get work done and not complain about getting work done. But, but regardless, you should be following this framework when you are posed behavioral type questions. Without further ado, guys, let's get into the video segment. I'm going to start with what I remember most. And that's like the start at the end and move to the beginning. Always, I, one of your questions should always be ask about the next steps of the process. What are the next steps, right? Do I message you in a, in a, in a week? Should I expect to hear from you in, within a week? What's the timeline look like for this process, right? You want to have an actionable next step because if you just sit there, you know, sometimes you, you can't expect them to just get back to you. Right, so just ask about the next steps there. Um, I liked how you talked about your favorite portfolio project and why it's a passion project. I like the fact that you said the result of that is you are more confident about learning about options. But what I'm seeing a general lack of in this behavioral interview that I saw more of in the second one was you're not using the star approach as much, which is tell me the situation, the task at hand, the action you did and the result. So for example, I'm using one of your examples yourselves. The situation I had was a team project. Uh, the team project was one given to us by the professor to build an application. That's a task. The task is the application called the hunt. My action was to initially start coding right off the beginning, splitting up the work amongst various team members. But what I soon came to realize was that when you're all, not all, all on the same page and people are working on different parts of the code base without a clear vision and clear plan, things get very messy very quickly. So what I decided to do as a result of that was have a group meeting, write out the scope and think of a better version of what we were building. And as a result, you were able to complete this project on time before the deadline. And I learned the importance of creating scope documents for software solutions. Do you see how clean that was? You see how like situation, task, action, result that was? Yeah. That's what you should be focusing on more. I was hearing kind of bits and pieces of that. And I tried to pull it out of you by asking you like, what, what was the, what was the outcome or the result? So, once again, formulate everything based off situation, task, action, result. Okay. I uh, asked you a question about communicating with other people. Um, you said they had a good result there. Everybody should get on the same page. And um, what I think you should ask in one of your questions is, hey, Optiver, I saw online you have like a, a training program for everybody that comes into the firm about trading. Can you tell me a little bit more what that looks like? 
what you did really well at the beginning is you talked about things that you saw on their website or things you read online. When you say things like watching your video on the website, I learned X, Y, Z shows that you're interested in what they have to do and what they have to show you. Okay. So that's something you want to bring up constantly. Another thing, when they ask you, are you interviewing with anybody else? You said you brought up IMC and Nakuna. And what I don't like, so that was a good, you want, you want them to experience some sort of pressure that you're wanted, right? When you're wanted, other people are going to want you. It's just human psychology. What I didn't like that you did there though, was you made Optiverse seem too good. Of course you want to work there, but you know, you said like, I die, you pretty much said I die to work there, which is nice. You, you want to highlight them, but you don't want to make it seem like you don't care about the other options. You want to make it seem like, you know, like other people are competing for my attention. I think Optiver is great, but you know, what I've seen from other firms is great as well. So I'm partial to Optiver, but I'm still in the process, in a competitive process with other firms. Um, what would you be interested in working on? This is a very tough question, especially as coming in as an intern, somebody that doesn't know enough about the firm really, about what's going on inside. You should think of like a couple of things you might be curious about working on because they'll, they might ask you this question. They might ask you, what do you think you'll be working on and what do you want to work on? I know I was asked that question when I came in and I was kind of befuddled by that question. It kind of caught me off guard. What do you envision yourself doing day to day? That's a very similar question, right? So before you, same thing, you were kind of like, I don't know, I, you know, it didn't seem like you, you really knew. And I wrote like, uh, the answer here was a little weak. Now, this doesn't need to have like a star-based answer. You're not going through a task that you did before, whatever, you're kind of providing information as to what you think you'd be doing. And I would say, so, if you're very unsure, I would say something like, I think for the first two weeks, I'd probably be shadowing other developers. Um, and, and I think I'll primarily be focused on fixing bugs, small minor bugs and adding logging to applications. I also know interns and junior developers usually do things that senior developers might not have the time to address. So I'll be working on projects that senior developers might want junior developers to get a crack at and to kind of take off their own plate to save themselves time. So those are very general things you can bring up that aren't like specific, you know, I'd be working on this piece of code on this line and this whatever, right? So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, another question. This is, this is a hard question to answer and I don't, I don't blame you. It's what value can you add to the firm? There is a, and, and what I would do in this situation is, like I said, it's similar to the previous question. I'd abstract it a bit more, especially as a junior developer. What I really like that you did here is you said that I recognize in the short term, I may not be adding as much value as I would in the long term, which is why I'd like to see myself at, at your firm. I like to grow at your firm. I think in the short term, I might not be adding as much value as I'd like to because I'm just joining, I'm ramping up, I'm getting familiar with the code base. But over time, because I take a lot of initiative and I'm very coachable, I'd like to take on more work responsibility at the organization. And I'd be adding value by addressing issues that are prominent at the firm that nobody has addressed yet, okay? And for example, there's a lot of tasks that senior developers might not have the time to work on. I would like to take my time to work on tasks to help alleviate senior de qualms be between senior developers or to take things off their plate per se. Those are things that you can talk about there. Why this firm? You need a lot more structured bullet points. You said, I want to learn. I want to be coached. You need to have two to three things. Okay. First thing is I want to work at this firm because of the culture. I know the culture is great because I've watched the video of Bethany speaking about the culture and I think it's very relatable. She brought up the fact that your culture is always about continuous growth. And personally, that's the kind of fire that I see in myself, the fire of continuous growth. The second reason is I spoke to person XYZ at the firm and person XYZ told me how much he enjoys working there. He told me how much he likes working on XYZ project. And those are all things that interest me as a developer. I think the problems you guys are solving are unique to the industry and you guys are on the tip of the spear. And I'd like to be on the tip of the spear trailblazing alongside you guys. See, that's something that I'd have more structured points. Um, okay. I like how you knew who the competitors at the firm was, you know, who you were up against. I also liked how you talked about continuous growth as one of your points for how you manage your, uh, as, as one of your points for why should we pick you? A question or something that I think it's very important to address, especially in questions that they ask you that focus on how will you solve X, Y, Z problem? The best way, just so you know, the best way to solve a problem is to not have the problem to begin with in the first place. 
So what you want to do is you want to first speak about taking preventative measures to make sure the problem doesn't arise. So when I asked you, how can you manage time across multidisciplinary teams across various time zones? The first thing you need to bring up is, before I tell you how I will solve this problem, I want to tell you how I would prevent this problem from occurring to begin with. I know that sometimes it might be difficult to contact team members in different time regions. Hence, before I do everything, I will make sure to send information as to what I'm doing and what information I'll need from another team at least two days beforehand, such that that team will know what information I need shall I, if I need to hit them up at you know, 8 p.m. their time. They will be in the loop, so it won't be a surprise. They won't be asking, you know, why is this guy pinging me at 8 p.m. for something? They will already know what to expect. That's a preventative measure. A good way to deal with it, and I like your answer for this part, a good way to deal with it if I haven't prevented this problem is to understand the circumstances first. How urgent is this? Is it a short-term or a long-term task? If it's a long-term task, it can probably wait till the morning. If it's a short-term task and it's urgent, I might want to go through Slack directly. Or if it's catastrophic, I'd want to call the person. But if it's a short-term task that isn't so pressing, I'll maybe want to email this person, have them respond to me at their own leisure. That's how I'd manage my time in a cross-functional team. I like how you brought up how you personally journal. That's a good way to, to address the problem, but it wasn't a very direct answer. It was nice that you said I manage my time by writing things down, but it wasn't how would you solve this problem about you know, speaking to somebody in an interdisciplinary team? Another question that I think uh, you could have answered better is who the CEO's name is, especially since you sent me a, the picture of you know, the CEOs. And, but yeah, just, just know his name, maybe even his first name. You don't need to know his full last name, where he was born, et cetera. And you know, when they were founded, that's probably, probably a key date as well. I think they said something about eight years in the run making, maybe more, I, I don't know. Um, probably more actually, uh, probably a lot more, but yeah, know how long they, they, were, they were there for. I did like your answer for strengths, one coachable, two high initiative, but I, I'd like you to tell me more, give, like give me an example. So you say, you know, I'm coachable. Um, I was previously a mentor under this person, whatever. And as a result of being mentored by him, I was able to later take on mentorship under somebody else's wing. So once again, these are the questions that you need to answer in the star pattern, situation, task, action, result. Okay. What do you like the most? I think that's a question I also asked. I'm not sure if I asked what do you like the most about the firm or what do you like the most? And um, oh, it was what do you like most about the firm? I, I like this answer. It was very jovial. It was very happy. You know, everybody looks happy at the firm. Nobody's frowning on the, on the homepage of the website. Um, you know, what you oh, what I really, really liked here is how you brought up a point or a quote from an actual developer that works at the firm. So you said, they're fine with tearing down the code and rebuilding if that's what's required. And just like I said before, just showing that you've read the website that you've kind of read about a day in the life that goes so far. So the more information you pull off the website to put in your answers, the better. Okay, um, I'm almost done here. And then we can, I can address some of the questions you might have about my feedback here. Um, I really like how you spoke about the 2019 annual report for the same reason that I like that you pulled the quote from the developer that was on the website. Now, I also asked about your interests. I like how you talked about reading, but I really wanted something more concrete. If you're gonna tell me reading, okay, tell me what you like reading, like reading horror, reading whatever. But, but what I really liked is when I pressed on that question, you talked about boxing. You said the situation was I'm a boxer, right? Um, you know, the task is I went boxing once a week. Uh, between the ages of 16 and 18. The actions was I developed my mental fortitude in a situation where somebody else would be completely scared, right? When you're boxing, you need to be remain calm, not sweat it while somebody's like literally punching you in the face. So <laughs> that's very hard. And the result was, you know, you gain that mental toughness that mental fortitude that you carry with you today. And as a result, you're better able to handle stress than potentially another candidate, right? But you just need to focus on highlighting that once again, situation, task, action, result. As long as you keep those four bullet points in your head, you can spitball everything. I mean, I've been spitballing a lot of the things that you've been talking about more fluently than, than, than you have, right? So it's just, and it just comes back to practice fluency in the STAR method. Okay, have you worked in a team before? Um, you talked about a project, Flocker. 
Uh, the I like how you talked about the results. So, you know, you were able to band together and, and what you learned from that is, you know, take the first step to address a teammate that might not be reaching deadlines. Here, I think you addressed the star pattern a lot better than in your previous uh, questions. Um, let's see here. When I asked you, so now getting to the academics, when I asked you, you know, what's your favorite course, least favorite course, let's look at the least favorite course first. You talked about the data structures and algorithms. Now, I know that you spun it in the sense that this wasn't your least favorite course, but it was the course you're most disappointed in. I would try to find another course, maybe like, I didn't really like, I don't know, uh, assembly. Not because it isn't uh, important to understand how a computer works on the inside now, but because it's not as applicable as other languages like Python and C++ in today's modern job market, right? So uh, that's something I'd bring up. And also, if you say data structures and algorithms, and you say, you know, everybody got a 90 in the class, they're more likely to grill you. They might pass that on to somebody else later, and they're most likely to grill you there. Um, okay, I like how you talked that you liked about software fundamentals. You, once again, applied the star-based approach here, teamwork-based, project-based, and the result was a web server that you built with the team. Now, one of the things that I think is probably the most important point, and this is one of my last point here, when you're starting off the interview, there will always be a tell me about yourself. Your tell me about yourself was extremely long. It should be a maximum of a minute and a half. You went on for three minutes, so you doubled that time. I wrote the different time points that it took you to get to saying what you wanted to say. For example, it took you a minute and 45 seconds to get to investing. So that's way, 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 way too long. Okay. You should be talking about investing at around the 40 second mark. So, you know, I started at this university. I realized it wasn't challenging and mentally stimulating enough. I switched universities. When I was there, I started learning to code. And at the same time, I was also investing my parents' money or I was investing my own money. I started thinking about the crossroad between finance, investing, and coding. And that brought me to the world of quantitative trading and proprietary trading. I dove, dove into that world and I built a couple of projects that really got me curious about more of the industry itself, which is why I'm sitting in front of you right here. Okay, so that's how you make that smooth transition. And I did that all in less than 30 seconds right now. Um, you just rambled and rambled for like three minutes and 30 seconds. Now, it was still on topic. It was okay. When I, when I say rambling, you weren't talking about, you know, your dog's wife or whatever, right? So you were talking about relevant things, but it was just way too long. I like how you talked about taking initiative to learn Python and, you know, you're fascinated by puzzles. You hit those points. Okay, but just, just make sure it's more, it's more concise. And if you want to write, write up and tell me about yourself, make it one paragraph, say it out loud in time and make sure it's under the minute and 30 seconds and send it to me. And I will gladly review it and tell you what, if it's okay, what path you're on. Okay. And with that, that is the end of what I have to say. And I will open it up for you. Thanks for watching that video to its entirety. If you did, I'm assuming you're very interested in actually learning more about breaking into the space. And if you're interested and want to book a private one-on-one -on -one consulting session with me, you can do so in the link in the description box below. Below this video, there's a link to my Discord and my Calendly. You can book a time in my Calendly and then follow up by pinging me on Discord directly. That's where I can confirm the time works for me and we can go from there. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Subscribe to this channel, guys, and I look forward to sharing more content with you guys in the future. Cheers.